Thank you very much, Renee. I'm his favourite caster. I'm pretty excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> Everybody's now, excited here. Yeah, actually, I mean, we saw that enthusiasm there from the French side. I don't think I've ever seen somebody wear sunglasses at an esports event. Like, actually, on their... But there's a lot of lighting in the yeah, it did. arena. Actually, yes, that's the strategy. Many people think this is a style choice that might undermine his gameplay. There are a ton of spotlights, a ton of fancy floodlights. You go out onto a stage like that, you're expected to sit on the couch and look maybe down at the reflective floor, and you just decide to go ahead and outplay the stage, not just the enemy team, but also the stage, and you do that by wearing a nice pair of sunglasses. Not even that, but the phone's brightness could be turned up to the maximum. If you have no idea how to turn that down, your eyes might start to hurt. So yeah. that is also something to consider. I had considered that possibility, but now I am, but I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> um, and also maybe the beard works that way as well, because you have to look through, it's like a filter, right? <laughs> so you have to look down through the beard and you put the phone under it. So if there's really a lot of glare coming up from the stage, we're seeing that adaptability from both these teams here. And you really only see that kind of adaptability from top teams. Yeah, top-notch <laughs> strategies being used here for this influencer match. We can see already that they're so much more prepared than our non-pro teams were earlier today. I, I, I mean, there, there is the element of uh, experience over on the Swedish side. They have so many uh, ex-pro players, so many experienced players in a variety. Oh, but the shoes are coming off. Hold up. <laughs> the French team, they're getting comfy. They're not planning on leaving that couch. They're going to full BO3. Yeah, it does look so comfortable up in the couch. I've they can just sampled. chill and relax while we're here talking about filters and the lights that are hitting them straight to the face. I've never sat on that couch, but I kind of want to. Like, the longer we look at it and how comfortable they're getting on it. <laughs> Do you think we can get one up here? I have no idea. I, b I bet we could. Well, we are getting into the pick van phase. Both the teams are in the lobby. And we can get into uh, a match that, well, there's no reason not to be brutally honest. There was a lot of there was a lot of predictions in the in the favour of Sweden, and I have to agree with them. I I don't see why they take it differently. Yeah, Sweden with their former competitive experience as well as Loda and Eka both being at the Gamescom show mm -hmm. event for this game definitely helps them out a bunch. So they already are familiar with the game. Uh, interestingly enough, the bands are really standard. First pink comes through as well. So not only you get Whoa. you get rid of two of the uh, most you get rid of two of the most commonly banned characters, Alice for her extremely powerful support capabilities, Mirad for his incredibly effective jungle capabilities, and then you bring in very, very commonly first picked characters. This is much more standard uh, to the meta than the games we saw from the non-pro teams early. Yeah, we have to consider Joker's not being picked up. Now, that is, a, some, that is a pick that we saw some of the teams utilize in their matches. And right now, looking at these picks and bans, I'm a little bit surprised. Seems like both of the teams have done their homeworks on what's strong and what they should pick. Maybe they've consulted their teams, as actually now we have a little bit of a switch up with Maganga coming out. Now, that is a so interesting pick because we don't get to see that that often. Yeah, he's been very powerful when we have seen him, but uh, he, he just doesn't seem to be in the matter for the vast majority of teams. So maybe yet another example of the developing game, the developing meta, and uh, maybe another example of superior beard-based decision-making. That could be true. That absolutely could come into fruition here. As we're going to have to see if that beard decision-making will continue throughout the game for these influencers. French side completes their draft, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, that's way, way more standard than I would have expected. The only real upset there for me is the Maganga. Yeah does look pretty standard from both of these teams besides the Mag Maganga. Now I'm having a hard time figuring out how Fren French side is going to lay that. Maybe they have some sneaky strategies up their sleeves. Mm -hmm. They might do a five people middle push straight off the bat. We, you know, you joke, but we did see that yesterday during rehearsals. Yes, we did. So there's no reason for it not to be effective except for the fact that it's generally not effective. But it could we could be pioneering a new meta here 
and I'm pretty excited to see what the French bring to well, the table. Back into practice, we saw a lot of interesting things, like Truitz being the most valuable player of the team. So I'm really interested to see if the influencers are going to use that strategy and utilize those Truitz to the full effectiveness that they can have on the game. Well. We now have fully loaded in, uh, and so we should be able to get into game in just a moment. And I think the the real story, once again, the French team, there, there's been some talk of maybe they've played the game a bit more, but they are not the expected victors, if only because of the strength of, of competitive experience and MOBA experience over on the Swedish side. Yeah, the Swedish side are looking dangerous and we're going to have to see throughout the show if they're going to be able to perform and stand up to the standards that we are kind of comparing them to. And hopefully this one is going to go all three games and it's going to be a close one. Yeah, this, I mean, this is even more of a wild card than uh, the earlier games where we had a Swedish team that had only played you know, two games or so in the competitive scene. We weren't sure what to do with what they would be doing. Now this is even more of a wild card because we haven't seen either of these teams play competitive. We know that individual players on both these teams have played in a decent setup before, but I, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, we have no idea what to expect here. Everything can get turned upside down in a second here in this game. So we have no idea how these teams play prior to the games we're going to see today. Well, I can't wait to find out. We see an early push here. The entire Swedish side going very deep into the jungle and they're hunting for, a, for an early pickoff and they may have one. I believe that's Gonzo going to go very low. Yeah, forsen has gone low here, Kataga as well, and they're keeping the fight going. French side is falling lower and lower, and they have to be careful. Flank is going forward, the fight for blue buff is gonna happen, then Euro's being used by Kataga, but it's gonna put him in a really, really bad spot, because there was four players surrounding him when that one ended. Yeah, Loda, Forsen and the rest of the Swedish side will now fall out of the jungle. They don't have that uh, Abyssal Dragon up yet. They're doing a great job turning those kills not into objective, no, but into map control. And that's what I want to say. Yeah, map control is so important in these games. They need to be on top of it. If you can take away the enemy turrets, there's not going to be the safety of the turret damage, which we spoke pre-game that the turrets are sometimes the MVP of uh, these fights. Okay, and Orb, they got pressured there in top lane. The French making their first real aggressive plays of the match so far. And that was cleaned up pretty quickly. Loda and Daedrich, though, they've just got the Soul Dragon. So that will give them vision into the jungle and an opportunity to punish Moban hard. Yeah, the uh, Abyssal, the Abyssal Dragon is going to come up in eight seconds here. Now, that is something we have to see how these teams react to that. We know pro teams like to just kind of gank and take that objective. Mm -hmm. But pro teams might do something differently. They might not prioritize the Abyssal Dragon as much. Yeah, those amateur teams earlier today were, were locking out the Abyssal Dragon almost as soon as it came up. And we do expect that, but it's also, once again, very important to make sure that you have the space to do it. And you can do that by securing map control, by securing kills, by faking out. Uh, but we need to see one of those plays from Sweden or France before they should feel comfortable just going for the Abyssal Dragon. Yeah, for us, it's going to go on to Spirit Central. We've spoke multiple times about that objective as well. Now, if Abyssal Dragon, you lose that fight or you lose that objective, it is rather hard hitting because of the gold lead that you get off of that. We, uh, as we see, Ake going to go in on top. And Force is going to try to find a bad rank, but he missed. He said Forsen was going in on the Abyssal Dragon. I think the Abyssal Dragon oh, won. So, <laughs> <laughs> with the aim of Kenny, the Abyssal Dragon, you know, they made an alliance. Kenny came through on the Zuka and pushed Forsen away from the Abyssal Dragon. <laughs> and he managed to survive the fight. Mitch, you know, to be honest, I'm not really rooting for Sweden or France. Uh, but I am really rooting for the Abyssal Dragon. <laughs> Abyssal Dragon is fun finally, finally going to find his opportunity to show himself, as it does look oh, like no. the French side are going to help him oh. in this endeavor as the Swedish side group up four people and just gank up on that was, that was the Abyssal unfair. Dragon. I'm, I'm pretty upset with that, to be honest. But uh, the Swedes, despite their lack of honor shown fighting the Abyssal Dragon, do take a very good engagement with it. They lock out the rest of the maps so that they can take it completely unhindered, and it works very well to their benefit. As now, they do have a very slight gold lead and great map control. So what you're saying is, with this Abyssal Dragon, that we, ha we should have some sort of movement 
that we should buff it so it can stand up against these players. Oh, absolutely. Or in the meantime, though, no. he's taking heavy fire on the top lane. I love RK coming in, though. Oh, that's brutal. RK comes in for oh, the Orb. Side that <laughs> should go down Orb, though. He gets a little bit too greedy, decides he can take the fight. Orb really wanted that kill. He was yeah. chasing for such a long time. As Forsen's on the run for now, he's being focused out by Kotaga as well as Kenny there being chased in the jungle. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, we're gonna see Loda as well as Drake gonna push the turret down. So they've established some of the map control. Look at Kenny and Gokka. They are getting really far into the Swedish jungle and they're gonna be able to pick up a decent amount of jungle camps. They might be in trouble now though as Gokka will be knocked down incredibly go low and he should be going down. Nitrich pops the metamorphosis to secure this. Kenny, oh no, you should be running. Run! Yeah, yeah Kenny's gonna get the safety of the turret but it's not gonna save him. He was way too low, as we saw the side of Sweden roaming with all five people into the middle. They're gonna pick the turret. Top lane, though, Violet is gonna get the turret with Valheim as well. So the gold difference is not gonna swing that much because they trade objectives. Mm -hmm. And that does keep both sides kind of in this game. The Swedes are continuing to do a, a really impressive job, actually, though of cleaning out jungle. It's a thing a lot of the amateur teams have really been working on improving. It's just the efficiency with which they can clean out jungle. And for a Swedish roster that isn't really an official roster and hasn't played very much as a team, they're doing a great job. Yeah, Swedish sides are really efficient right now, but they've left some of the camps up. Not, not, we don't usually see that from the non-pro teams, but the Swedish side does say, we're not going to take the small camps, they don't provide as much, and they just take the big points out of the jungle, just taking those buffs to give them the advantage they need in these team fight scenarios. Uh-oh. Thorsten oh. uh, had a brief exploration with the wall, but they'll now go for the Abyssal Dragon. Again, Loda comes through as well, or it's a full team there, and well, the French aren't even contesting it. They've been pushed so far back by great map control that they're not really able to find much, and poor Moman's gonna get caught out. Yeah, Moman's gonna get caught out here with the five members of Sweden are gonna come down to the bottom, and they're gonna clean him up as Arthur finds himself. Having to respawn from base as Master Snake is gonna come Master Snake is gonna come through and he's gonna fall as well. The French side lose two members as a turret is gonna get pushed here. Orb and the side of Sweden are looking for more. They're not gonna have any leeway for France. Yeah, more towers go down. Again, great map control. Zerator though, uh he's just pushing. He's got his siege engines uh, just working away at that tower though so he's actually recalling back to the base he'll play defense and allow his minion wave which is very aggressively pushed to begin doing damage onto the turret and i like that it's not going to secure them the turret right away but if it's left unaddressed by the swedes it may take it down anyway now interesting note this is shaping up to be kind of the same game that happened between swedes and the french in the game one of the tournament mm -hmm. so what could happen is that the top lane gets pushed. Now, I'm sure the French oh, no. side has told their team, you that, know what you should do <laughs> is focus on top, just push that down the base and continue pushing until you win the game. And that's a strategy that they, they can use as Metamorphosis is going to come through. The French side are going to take this fight. The Will Devourer gets cancelled by the movement coming through from Guac. And then the French side are losing a lot of members. Master Snake's going to go down. Kataka is the last member surviving. He's He's not going to be able to do it as he's going to fall. And four members from the side of Sweden are going to survive this fight and push for those objectives. That may very well be the, uh, a brutal blow because the French, they took a, a very awkward fight there. They weren't able to come out on top and now they've just lost so much ground. They're going to lose so many towers off of this. Like, we talked kind of jokingly about it, but I genuinely think it might be a great idea for France to try and sneak a backdoor through that bot line. Yeah, they did it in the first game between <laughs> the non-pro team, yeah. so that would definitely be a strategy that could work here. As we see France advancing forward, they're confident and they can do it. As Dre, he's going to be put to sleep here in just a second by the French side. The crash is having a lot of difficulty escaping. Arthur's going to give chase force and going to come in from the side, but they cannot find the trades needed in the bottom lane. The Swedish side crumbling for now, oh, as we have good. another casualty in this war. Three 
three people are gonna fall from the side of Sweden. We saw Ake pushing alone on the bottom side. He was unable to do major damage to the enemy base. And that's actually quite good. I go as far as to say that puts France right back in the game. Sure, they're still pretty far behind in gold and kills, but they're able to get a lot of map control with that. And I'd love to see them convert that into Dark Slayer, which it looks like they're going for, or Abyssal Dragon. It looks like they're going for Dark Slayer. Spirit Sentinel. Or Spirit Sentinel near Dark Slayer. If they're able to get a series of objectives off of those kills, they can be right back into the game. Yeah, it, it is by no means over. Uh, we can see one split push coming through oh, in did. one part of the game, and it could be over in less than 30 seconds here for the side of Sweden. So we definitely have to keep an our eye on the lanes that are being pushed to the high ground turret. We have to keep uh, our eye out for the split pushes that can happen from both of these sides as we see bottom lane. Sweden, good to your split push there. And at the top lane, we can see the friends doing the same thing. Yeah, Daytrix and Loda will be pushing together with the rest of their team, trying to come in on the side of this French team. And actually, it's looking quite good as they lean into the team fight. Yeah, Sweden's looking for a great fight right now. They're 5,000 ahead. They really want to find the fight that they're comfortable with, right? You don't want to get a fight where you might be able to pull out ahead because there's no need to take unnecessary risk at this point. They're so far ahead, they know it. They're gonna go for Dark Slayer. Now, this is a safe option here. They've cleaned up two... Uh, lanes of tier 1 and tier 2 turrets so they have a lot of map control and now you're gonna head into the top lane off the back of this dark slayer to pick up even more turrets yeah and this may very well be another fatal blow because they have so much to work with but look at this mid lane push oh i love this the french team if they decide to stick with this which it, unfortunately it doesn't look like they're going to do they could have absolutely caught on the swedes off guard instead they're going to recall max their base and try and prepare for a team fight I would have liked to see the base race coming through in this game. That was a total possibility here as Zerator. Oh, that Batman stun's not going to happen. Zerator oh, no. is going to tactical fire away. The S Swedish side are going to give chase, but they're being split up. Oh, the French side split. are focusing on middle. Trey has used the ultimate. The metamorphosis is making him so tanky. Kenny, it has to run. He's falling low. But this side of Sweden have claimed a casualty in that war. They have picked up Master Snake as he has fallen in the jungle as that of all hands. So Swedish side having the numbers advantage for now. They do what we were praising the uh, amateur teams for doing though, which is you do a whole bunch of damage, you have a definite advantage, rest on your laurels, make sure that you're able to convert that into a victory by playing slow, careful and safe. And now they go for a team fight, they'll annihilate Kenny and be looking for more. Yeah, the damage coming through uh, from the Swedish side is just so big. We've talked about a few of the times when we had Telana's picks in the tournaments as well as the qualifiers, that she is such a high range character, right? Mm -hmm. The eagle eye comes through and suddenly Telana's is hitting you from so far away, you, there's no way to initiate on her. So that is definitely something that the Swedish side is utilizing here. Yeah, Lodo's been having a great time on that character. You can see him responsible for an ultimate there as he continues to find kill after kill and he'll be, oh my God, the double here just looking for this final push on the main and i think it may very well be coming through as moman Kotka and kenny are the only players here to defend kenny Kotka, and moman are there to defend and swedish side are not going to give up right now or the french side my apologies there as they lose a member moman is going to be the next to follow kataga is the only member surviving for the french will he be able to push back the swedish side will he be able to stop this from happening as it's not going to happen the ace as well as the base push is gonna come through from the Swedish side as they game as they claim a game one of this best of three series. No, it is a BO3, it is never again. And we know that we, we brushed on the fact that the French team hasn't played together much, so it is entirely possible we now see them. I mean take a deep breath, get in the Zen zone and and work together as as a unit. Uh, and maybe this is kind of a three part anime storyline for the French team. Right? I, it's it's part one, and they're at the bottom. It's, it's also the hero's journey, right? Part one, they're at the bottom of their luck. It's not the best. Part two, they'll begin to kind of put things together, but they're still kind of scrambling. Maybe they get a game. And then part three is the triumphant act. You know, the, the season finale. 
and he gets to be the chosen one. I'm not sure who it is. Probably the guy with the sunglasses. From zero to hero real quick is what you're saying for yes, the French side. Well, Renee, I, I'm sure you have plenty of thoughts on anime, so let's throw it back over to you. I mean, with a game like that one, how can you not be ready? Yeah, we're definitely ready to go for game two. That was exciting, game one, and hopefully we'll continue to see some beard strategies come through as well. Yeah, I don't, look, I've never had a beard, right? I think I don't think it would look good on me, but if I did grow one out, I, one, I assume it would be a transcendent experience, <laughs> right? Because everyone I know who has a magnificent beard is really happy with their magnificent, magnificent beard. Uh, and secondly, I assume I'd instantly become much better at video games, because I know a ton of bearded people, and they're all really good at video games. Yeah, that could help you a lot. I don't think you're fully on board with this plan. Well, there's no scientific you, evidence, you so you would statistics. be the first one to actually test the theory. Okay, well, I am a scientist, so I can, I, I'll get right back to you on that. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, though, I do believe we have a draft coming up, so we can focus on that. Uh, and th we, we talked about game one. It was a very, very bog standard draft for the meta, and I kind of expect this. The players probably have played this at a casual level, not as a team, so you turn to the non-pro teams, the amateur teams who have been playing through all these qualifiers, you say, hey, what's the matter? And they play off that. Yeah, most definitely these guys have had consultation with their respective teams in the non-pro series right now. So Ooh, I would up. say uh, it is they, they've definitely done a lot of stuff to maximize their chances here. Yeah, Bang Vero is a little bit interesting. I, I'm curious to know exactly what that is. We don't typically see Vero banned. Uh, she's a support type character, lots of stuns, and in the mage category. I'm expecting to see Batman versus Joker matchup here. I don't know. That, I, I, and I'm, I'm basing it off of the fact that everybody in the French side, in the lobby, had a Batman icon. They well, did. The other side, they, did. they had was, Joker. Yeah. So I'm expecting a Batman versus Joker matchup here. I was. I was. I thought that was an excellent effort and uh, team coordination there, perhaps more team coordination there from the French team in the lobby than we saw the entirety of last game. Yeah, that could be used to describe the situation here. Uh, Sweden still not picking up the Joker. Their uh, interesting way of going about draft, maybe they don't want to re reveal it way too early. Uh -huh. it's, it's so they're keeping it, keeping it as the last they, pick, they the surprise. They slot for another marksman. If they'd like to pull out the, the Joker, it would fit with the current team composition. Um, we'll, we'll see if it comes in. That's what I do have that final pick. Or make the decision we need. Make, don't make the decision you want, make the decision we need. <laughs> so make it for the classical clash between Batman versus Joker in the DC universe that we've seen oh, so no. many times. Oh, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna see the clash of Titans of DC here. But what's gonna happen is we're gonna see these two uh, influencer teams clashing up against each other. The shoes are still off for the Swedish side. There, there's a lot of cross-legged sitting there, and I do kind of have to question that. Because if you're sitting cross-legged, right, on a, on a bench like that, don't your feet fall asleep? I don't know, that is a good question. Have you, have you ever done that? Yeah, I have, but I guess it comes down to how much you've actually practiced sitting like that. Yeah, no, uh, definitely some really interesting sitting techniques coming out there from the French side. But maybe it's a strategy. Yeah, so you see, when your feet become dead, right, that means that there's more blood to go to your brain, and it exactly. makes you think faster. That gives you more opportunity to be on top of your game, on top of the uh -huh. focus levels. I'm starting to think this isn't true. I, there's just, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's not how science works. But then again, we aren't scientists here, so we don't really, really know. Oh, okay. Shoes are all on. There is no cross-legged sitting over the Swedish side. They are dead serious. They are here to win. Maybe the Swedish side actually get, gains enlightenment from the shoes. Maybe that's why they're so, so good at grouping around. You know, I think that's unlikely, but a lot of people care a lot about shoes. You see sneakers going for, for quite a high amounts at auction these days. That could be true, but the Swedish side, they use boots to move around, and so do their characters, so that has a direct correlation. Maybe the French side are a little bit slow because they don't have boots on in the arena. 
better coordination, better movement speed. Wear shoes while, while flying Arena Valor. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, the the player draft did come through earlier. Uh, from that, it, it was a pretty major switch up. I would like to note Loda is staying on Telenas, and you can see that here on screen. And they were quite terrifying towards the end of last game on that character. Yeah, Loaded really picked it up in the later stages of the game. We saw Ake doing absolutely wonderful work when 10-0-9 in the game. He was doing everything for his team in the mid game. And that's exactly what you need from middle lane. And going into the lane, you want to have that AD carry, just taking his role and just carrying you in the lane. Yeah, they've got a bit more standard set up here at the beginning here as well. Actually, no, I was going to say the Swedes are spreading out, covering all the lanes, but now they've got three grouped up in the jungle here, going for the Sage Column. We'll see if they stick together after they convert this Sage Column. Maybe go a little bit aggressive as a unit. I'd love to see that, but it looks like it'll... No, nope, go back to the more standard player predicted. One, two, two. Yeah, what's interesting, though, we see a switch up from the non-pro teams. We see Orb on the Grok heading to top rather than to the bottom, mm -hmm. where we used to, where we usually see Grok. And we see Crashed, who is usually when those two are picked, going up to the top, be on the bottom lane and helping out to tell on us. Yeah, Gorgata got, got, got got in the mid lane is, is engaging Arke here. And this is kind of an interesting matchup for a couple different reasons. And so far, it's an entirely French one, at least in results. Yeah, right now, uh, everybody's just farming. It's a lot slower start to the game than it was previously. As we see, French side or uh, <laughs> Swedish side trade some blows with French side on the bottom. Yeah, they get the minion lead here, and this allows them to start working with the Soul Dragon. Of course, if they get this Soul Dragon, then they send out a little kind of scouting orb that goes deep into the jungle of the enemy team happen. and gives the vision on a few different things. Yeah, Batman's going to come in for a gank. The Genny, with the impeccable timing, Serator is taking a lot of out attack damage from Loda. He's still laying down the law. He's trying to find that damage, but Batman picks up the first blood with the Batarang. And this, this is already, I was going to say, better start for French, but then they lose one player in the middle lane. Yeah, the kill is now tied up one to one. Orb uh, can't have been too happy with that, but everything seems to have worked out, and indeed they've got Zerator and Master Snake just tied up in these bottom bushes, so there's not really much punish going through, even though they did lose a player there. Yeah, the French side are being uh, Rather contained here for mm. for the moment. They're not roaming around trying to find these pecs as we have Abyssal Dragon spawn now. And what I would like to see from the French side uh, that would change from the last game is the control of the Abyssal Dragon. They gave it away for free so many times oh, as we see Forsen. It's gonna come in for a gank. He's gonna miss the stun. The tornado comes through from Ake as they're gonna do some damage. Master's gonna escape under the turret and Zerator's laying down the damage. Forsen's gonna fall here. Zerator might be the next one to go. Swedish team are looking for this kill they can't find it but instead they are gonna put some damage down onto this bottom turret they did lose a player there but that was very well handled all things considered by the french duo there zerator was able to stay alive thanks to a timely intervention by master snack and they were able to train evenly up top as well kenny and moman are able to work together to take down orb and that's two examples now of pretty great teamwork for the french side and that's given them the slight lead in kills yeah, French side are really stepping up from game one, but you have to look at the money. The kills always tell a story, but the, so does the money. We look at the money, it's a little bit in favor of the Swedish side. Even though they're losing in kills, they're farming better across the map and getting that money to their pocket. Yeah, we kind of talked about that last game. We said that they had a, a great farm situation. And they also have the lead in, in turret day towns, so that gives them slightly more gold. And here's the Abyssal Dragon Ooh. actually getting started up by Arke and Davich over on the Swedish side. The miss by Batman once again. The stun's not going to happen. Metamorphosis does come through. Loda with that damage. They're going to lose a member. Jinar is going to go down at the French side. Try to advance oh. forward. Kenny's going to find a beautiful pick onto Loda, who does fall. Trey is going to give chase to Kenny. He's not going to find it. The bush is going to help him out. Kenny is so oh, masterful at juking. Oh my god, he's got a 
might be able to escape for now as Trey finds himself in a lot of trouble. Kenny, do not turn back at this point. You've got in the way. You need to stay safe oh, as no. we have Trey still gonna <laughs> give chase the battle rank. He's gonna deal a little bit of damage this time. Oh my god, and then oh, Kenny no. turns it around. He picks up the kill as he's gonna be able to get away with as well with the sliver of HP that he had left oh while chasing. God. I, I haven't seen a better uh, turn around. I, I don't think ever. That was incredibly well done by Kenny. Manages to stay alive, although it, all his good work may have been undone here because they don't get the Abyssal Dragon off of that. And indeed, Loda and Forsen are able to instantly find a punish, turn it around, and start growing their, their only despite the fact that they weren't able to get the Abyssal Dragon. Yeah, they lose two members. Now, off the back of that fight, uh, I would say French was looking so strong, but they then then they lose two members yeah. to overextend in the bottom lane, stay under the turret. Loda, as well as Trey, come into the bottom, and they're going to be able to do so much damage there that it's insane. And here's the second attempt at the Abyssal Dragon by the Swedish side, and we'll be able to chop it up into mince meat this time, but no intervention. Looks like they'll get Soul Dragon as well. Lodic getting a little bit of extra scout for his team as they kind of pushes a unit down oh. towards bot lane, and this should be lethal. Yeah, Swedish side is gonna go in. They're gonna find two members from the French side, but the French are coming for them. Forsen's gonna fall. It's a three for three right now. Ak is gonna be under run. Dre is trying to run away. The Metamorphosis finally comes out from Dre as he's gonna stop the advancement from the French side. Kenny has to run now. He's falling lower and lower. Oh, no. One more out attack will do. But they can't find it as Kenny once again is going to be able to escape clutches of death. Kenny and Territor are racing back to their base. They'd like to not be on one HP. And the rest of the Swedes will be recalling. I think the last time I saw that efficient a recall of a Swedish product, there were uh, horse meat and meatballs involved. <laughs> yeah, but you don't need an IKEA. Yeah, I I'm not from Sweden. We don't have a Kia in Estonia, so... Really? Huh. I don't think I'd be, able to be alive with that idea. I guess this is why I'm rooting for the Swedes. Well, <laughs> that might be a uh, bit of a bad situation. Kenny goes in. He'll be able to trade evenly on what should have been an easy kill for Forsen. And now if he threatens Loda, this could get deadly. Badman's in a blah fast. They'd really have to be careful with Kenny. He's doing so much work for this French side. And if Batman does get way far ahead, it can turn really dangerous really quick for the Swedish side. Kenny will be cleaning up a few uh, jungle camps with the rest of the team. But Moman's getting a little bit of pressure up top. And uh, this should be the turret taken down. <laughs> oh, no, Orb. Oh, they might be able to save the day because he's he oh. drew the fire of that siege engine. Orb came in, he drew the anchor of the siege engine and took all the damage, and he's going to save the turret as a result. Yeah, I was going to... I wanted to see the siege engine on a mission. It looked like it had that turret in his sights. He was looking determined, but uh, we got the switch into the middle lane. They took a turret as we have a moment. He's going to have to run as the three members from the Swedish side are going to rotate up top as finally the siege minion is successful in the mission. I believe that's the next generation of Siege Minions coming through there for the French side and helping them out in the top lane. Meanwhile, on the middle lane, we have a fight. Batman's finally going to get shot down. Forsen and Ake are going to give chase to Kataga, who's going to be slowed out. The Nirvana is going to come oh, through. So Will well the movement speed be enough? Oh, Forsen is so going well lower and lower, and he's going to be killed here. As for now, Kataga gets the safety. French players consistently escaping with 10 HP. Yeah, Zero Zero and Mo Man came in there at just the right time, and Gotaga, I, I, there's no other way to put it than he saved himself. Brilliantly done. However, unfortunately, the Swedish side are, as always, brutally efficient with the jungle camps. They've taken out the Spirit Your Sentinel, they're looking for a bit more. A yeah, the Swedish side, it begs the question, the side of French are consistently escaping with 10 HP. Maybe Swedish players don't have the necessary damage to finish them. And if they're unable to finish the kills now, we see money being fairly even at this point of the game. Maybe a French side could actually come back into this game and turn this around with one good fight. And it could be the special Dragon if they go for it. This is a dangerous opportunity. The Swedes go for this special Dragon without clearing the fight. It could be dangerous. Master Smack, though, that's an unfortunate situation. Oh. He will go down easily. Oh my god, a great hook as well from Orr. 
Yeah, or with a great hook through the wall, is gonna claim one of the members as we're gonna see Batman on the run now. Sweden's, uh, Sweden is gonna chase this one down and Batman's gonna fall. We have Jinnar and Arthur both escaping. Taga and Moman are gonna be successful at saving themselves and as we see, Yotanga is gonna head to middle. They wanna get that turret in response to the push happening at bottom. They're gonna force Swedish players into the midline to defend or possibly try to find a pick onto him. Actually, it looks like we're seeing Dark Slayer attempted here by the Swedes as they eventually all fall back. Kataka, uh, he's so deep inside the Swedish jungle and he's just recalling, minding his own business. I love it. <laughs> yeah, escaping there uh, with just teleporting back, which is usually a good idea if you know roughly where the five members of the enemy team are. You know, Daedrich and the rest of the Swedish side are again. Mo man. Just hovering around this ball. Oh, what is wow. this? How is it working? The damage from the French side is gonna be absolutely insane. Oh A beautiful God. engagement. They've lost four members. Ake is on the run. Will he be able to be picked off here by the French side? Will they get the ace? We have Kataga that is gonna give chase to Ake. Ake with the wind play once again is gonna slow them down. Ake is gonna turn around. That's a mistake because he's gonna get taken down. The Thane ultimate coming through in the end as well as Ake gets cleaned up and finally the French side find themselves an ace to help them out in this game too. Fantastic play, but if they're not able to turn this into an objective, there's really almost no point to them getting the kills, and they're taking far too long. Stop going for the small jungle camps. Take the Dark Slayer now. Take the Spirit Sentinel now. And I think they've waited far too long. You can already see the Swedish players coming back in, and despite an excellent series of kills, French really didn't get much for it. No turrets go to them, no major objectives go to them. Yeah, the gold lead doesn't kind of switch around here. There's nothing major on the map that the French side really eliminated from the Swedish side. Dark is still up, that's an objective the Swedish, uh, Swedish team could go for right now. They're not gonna take the risk. They're gonna go for the safe play because they just lost the fight. It's too risky for them to go for the dark land right now. But if they would want to, they could theoretically go for it because French side does not have too much map control on their own side. Oh, they're looking for something. Mo Man in particular. Like a piece of him, but the Swedes will be threatened off as Kenny and Master Snake join in the fun. The French side really needs to find a couple of kills and turn them into objectives at this point. They really need to do that. Now we see third turrets as well as Pistol Dragons both mm -hmm. being in favor of Swedish. And the French side really needs to find some money to get those items, to get themselves live, and to have a chance of really dominating this game too. And the longer the French don't get any major objectives, the more hard it oh. gets for them to take these team fights. They do find an excellent split though, forcing so far away from the rest of his team, they're able to find big damage from it. Yotaga is going to be focused down on the back line. Lotus is going to come in from that side. He's laying oh, down oh. the auto attack. He's not being focused. Finally, Master Snake is going to keep focus on him. The metamorphosis is going to come through. Master Snake on the run while Arthur is going to give chase to Zill on the back line. Master Snake is still on the run. Loda is going to be pushed back. And Master Snake is surviving from now, but he's going to fall in just a second. Loda picks up the kill as Trey is going to survive and help Loda out in picking up Master Snake. French team again playing so carefully and it's just beginning to add up against them because this careful play is costing them opportunities. They go in hard to get oh. favorites here and Loda is very low as well. This is a great chance. Loda flickers away to get the safety. Smart decision there. They do not need to lose these members. They have to get the safety. If you're going to start losing members at this stage, it could still turn into objectives. Yeah, look at the gold lead here. Five or six K in favor of the Swedish side, and that's very significant given how far behind they are in kills, and that's representative of not just the fact that the Swedes have been doing excellent jungling, but also representative of the fact that the French haven't been doing much with the kills they've been getting. Normally you get three, four kills, you instantly pick up Dark Slayer, pick up the Abyssal Dragon, at least get Spirit Sanitum, and we haven't seen that from the French. Yeah, the French side hasn't capitalized on the mistakes that the Swedish side have ma made in this game. As it uh, looks like a possible setup for a fine tier French side. It's not going to have luck with this one because they have only three members in middle. So that's going to go horribly wrong for them if they decide to take this uh, right now. But now they're finally grouped up as we're going to see French side are going to initiate in. As we have Mo Man on the back line, he's going to initiate down onto the back line. Loda's going to fall, Loda. Okay. Batman finds the kill on the Dane ultimate. And that damage coming through Orb as well as Dre 
Frey are still alive. Gataga has to be careful because he's the only damage alive for the French side. Orb is gonna fall lower and lower. The pushback is there from Thane and it's looking so good for the French side. It's an ace and a double kill for Thane as they find the necessary lead that they want to have right now. And they convert it into a tower. Doubly important. Now they get something for it. And I want to see them now. Don't wait for the minion wave because it's going to take a while for you to get this next turret. You're not going to be able to get it with minion wave. So instead, fall back or tank the damage from the turret. Also a possibility, but not a very viable one. They can't right now. They do yeah. not have the auto attack damage. They have Jinnar as well as a thing. Nobody, nobody told Master Snack that. <laughs> <laughs> Master Snack is also he, he was eating those turret attacks for breakfast. Yeah. Having uh, a quick snack. None of them can really, really hardly force a turret push come through because they do not have the auto attack damage. Jinnar being a mage Kataga on that. They're not going to deal a huge, huge chunk of damage. They get some of the damage down, so if the next push is going to happen, the hunger turret is going to fall. But other than that, they do not have the auto attack damage to take that one down. Lotus taking this abyssal dragon. Oh, but... it's reset. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate there. Oh, it takes twice as long as a result, but I think he'll still manage to get it. That was a bit unfortunate. Well done, Lotus, though. He stuck through. Who knew? He was playing a tank after all. Bissell Dragon just wanted to return home. Rhoda, Rhoda really <laughs> disturbing the peace of the jungle yeah. there with his way of doing things and being aggressive there as we see the French side. We're well, going to try to find another good fight now. Thus far, they've done really well, considering the fact that they're actually behind on money. Mm -hmm. The man's coming through, trying for a hard initiate, and actually it's quite good if his team can follow up behind it. This could be great, but Moan's been shut down. He gets caught on that rock and instantly annihilates his result. Kenny, though, again, dives deep. He goes for it and shuts down, forcing oh, in the back lines. Oh, is going to get hit by the battle rank as well. He's going to get cleaned up. Kenny is doing so much work for the French side, forcing gets hit by the battle rank. Will he fall? Yes, he will. Oh That's triple God. kill for Kenny. He is bringing his team home. He's doing the damage necessary. He's keeping the hopes of the French side alive. Now, this wasn't the perfect fight for them, but they've done enough damage that the, so that the Swedish side can't push their advantage any further right now. Yeah, again, though, we see uh, an unfortunate habit of the French side. Dare I say, the French just seem to keep retreating. And you can see that from Master Snake there. The, the team fight wasn't decided yet, and he'd already withdrawn. He'd already shown that white flag, if you will. And that really did uh, uh, cost them the opportunity to turn that fight around. I just want to commend Kenny and Kenny's play. He's, oh, yeah. he's played also. out of his mind on yes. Batman. Really deserves a lot of credit here. He, t uh, he took down Loda. He took down Ake as a well as Forthen. So he took down three of the enemy carries alone. So that is definitely a big, big thing going for French team is that they want to have this Batman be as disruptive as and possible. Crucially, Kenny, uh, props to him every single fight. He dives into the back lines. Instead of trying to take the fight on the first initiators, he goes in, finds Loda, finds another DPS trying to hover at the back of the fight, be it Loda, be it Force, and I believe he got both of them the last fight. And that is exactly what his role should be doing in the middle of fights like Batman's that. Batman's going to find this Dark Slayer happening, but there's nothing he can do about it, Dark Slayer buff. He's going to go to the hands of the Swedish team. Yeah, and that gives them, of course, the buff. Now, they have an excellent series of fights. Should the French team take it, they are almost guaranteed to lose. So they need to just huddle up inside their base, use the towers to, to try and gain some semblance of a fair fight while this Dark Slayer buff is applied. Yeah, in the practice, church work really well for these teams. They need to find the way of utilizing them in this game as well. The French need to find their inner strength in uh, this oh, game too right now. Dude. Force the enemies back from a this aggressive push as Zerator on the Violet is one of the most capable ones of pushing back this push that is happening right now because of the tactical fire hits that you can do onto the enemies from afar. Yeah, but we will see them continue to apply this pressure, continue to take down turrets. The tier three turrets, the high ground turrets are beginning to fall now. And this means that if the Swedes can manage this final push, get a kill and off that initiation, be able to shut down the second high ground turret, they've almost been guaranteed the game. The French team, they need to find initiation. Yeah. They can't let Telanus Eagle Eye poke the turrets. They need to initiate and they need to do it oh, now. And that's the initiation. Kenny is going to go on to load every French side. Are finding all other members of the Swedish side, but it's going so 
so, so wrong for Sweden right now. They're losing members consistently as Loda right now is being able to do the damage necessary. Violet falls and it's a turnaround for the Swedish side. They find those kills. Master Snake, the last one alive. He's going to run. He's staying. Will he survive? The Windblade is going to finish him off. The Zill coming through with the ace for the Swedish side as this is going to be game two going over to the Swedish side in a spectacular finish to this game two. 27 to 27 is the final score line on the characters and I'm very pleased with that. Sure, the French didn't win, but it was no secret. We considered them the underdog. So to see them take it that close makes me very, very pleased. Yeah, the French side looking really strong there in the end. Incredible performance coming out of them, especially Kenny, we can see now at 10, 6 and 12 coming through uh, for him. So that is definitely impactful uh, player as well as a hero that Batman usually were used to seeing. Here's my question. We're seeing a lot of camera shots of the Swedish side. I'd love to see, if, if possible, I'd love to see a camera shot of the French side putting their shoes back on. <laughs> I want to see how that looks, you know, the science of it. But you know who had an excellent angle on that? Renee, I need a full report. Zut, hello! What happened? Tell me! You know, I will not comment the first game because it was our training camp. But uh, second game was really close and uh, we were... Sorry, I screamed a bit. Um, and uh, yeah. All the team fight were just Loda, Loda, focus, Loda! Oh my God, are you so dumb? <laughs> and uh, yeah, we did not make it, but we did 27-27 at the final scores, so we are really happy about it. Look, Loda, to be honest, there were some very close matches there, some team fights. Kenny was really strong. How did it feel coming up against that Batman? Uh, well, I mean, the, we we had a feeling that they wanted a Batman after <laughs> the first game. They have five Batman pictures. Um, but we were a little bit overconfident, maybe. We let it go, they took it, and then it felt like the game kind of started off in their way, you know? But I, I tried to keep keep everyone calm, tell them to protect me, I will carry them, so on. Loda, you've been in this position many times before. Obviously, no stress for you. I noticed your telenas was very strong. A lot of really good micro, really good positioning. At one time, I saw you, you know, really using those brushes uh, 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 to, to cover yourself as you did the damage to the enemy team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is it about that? Why Telenas? Why did you decide to go with that champion? Uh, actually, truth be told, I wasn't planning on playing uh, the carry in these games today. And uh, I had practiced something else, but, you know, one or two of our players kind of backed out on that. So um, a big shout out to Kelly. She's the one who taught me how to play Telenas. I actually played a lot with her uh, duo queue and she played Telenas. I played Crushed and uh, I texted her and asked her for some builds and some secret tips and it really worked out. Yeah. There you go, you haven't been getting your secret tips, that's the problem Zero Tour. So look, France did very well in the non-pro tournament earlier today. You guys didn't do so well, it's you know three points each. H how do you feel, what are you going to do to be able to come back from this position? You know, the main problem was the Dota experience because we were so out-rotated, like they took one tower and one tower, one tower, one tower, one tower, and then we couldn't do anything, so yeah, I don't know. We will f fight against Spain, I think, uh, in November. Um, can be easier for us, I think, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely do our best, I hope. <laughs> Look, and, and Loder, obviously, the, the non pro team for Sweden didn't perform as well as you did today. I can imagine John Kuping being, in, being at DreamHack Winter is something that's very important to your team. What do you think that? you need to do to get there and will the non-pro team see any mentorship throughout this process <laughs> uh, yeah sure I, I think that uh, they could improve a lot with with little time um, i think that with just a few comments here and there they could make their game um, a lot more even i think that you know they, they played up played against one of the best teams um, perhaps in the whole tournament uh, coming from france but i feel like if they did not panic as much as they actually did and you know if you're losing a tower give it up do something else at the same time don't waste time and, and just be calm and have fun very good well listen you guys have seen a masterclass in play there today especially 